and welcome family. I'm Danny Walker. If you're new, please subscribe, hit that notifications bell so you don't miss any of the new content. And also find me on social media at Danny Walker. I just got a TikTok by the way. I know I'm not Gen Z. It's weird. I really don't know how to use it, but please join me on there. It's just, it's just so, it's such a sad place for me right now. Normally during this time of year, I would be creating content for Miss USA. I would be there, we would be talking about preliminaries and all the activities, but because of the current situation of everything and Miss USA is to be announced, I thought, why wait for the fashion? I am here to fill the pageant shaped hole in your life with a fake top 10 that I have created and dressed in only the finest of couture. In this episode, I am going to show you a fabulous fantasy of what Miss USA could be if there were no budgets. But before I show you my vision for each contestant, keep in mind I do not know how to use Photoshop, so I used PicMonkey and a bunch of apps on my phone. Did I do my absolute best? No. Of course not. But was there love? Yes. And that's what matters. If you decide to create your own fantasy dress up for this year's contestants, do me a favor, post that to social media, use my hashtag Danny Walker and also tag me at Danny Walker because I would love to see what ideas that you come up with. Kicking off our top 10 this year is Hawaii. Today, Hawaii is in a look that was inspired by Beyonce's pregnancy performance. When I think of Beyonce, I just think of that moment she was on stage and she had that halo on and she had this backlight and it was shining and it was glamorous and she was angelic and that was the look I wanted this year for Hawaii. So I put her in this gorgeous gold creation. But to make it a little more pageanty, give it a little bit of that pageant sexy, we dropped the neckline. We kept her natural hair styled as it is because it is so beautiful and it's making a statement. Would you look at her? Just look at her. She is glowing. She's, she looks fabulous. Oh, oh, I just thought of something. Oh my gosh. Let's play a game together. Do me a favor, rank each one of these looks in the comments from one to 10. Let me know if you were the judge at home and this is what the contestants wore, how would you score them? I really want to see. Next in our top 10 is New Mexico. Cecilia is no stranger to a ponytail and with that face, I thought, you know what? Let's bring it back. Historically, Cecilia has worn some pretty simple gowns, so I wanted to be a little bit more over the top. I wanted to choose a very passionate color. Red was perfect for her, in my opinion. And we also added the opulence of the feather trimmed bottom and that sleeve trimmed in feathers. Oh my gosh, she's fabulous. Sort of reminiscent of Miss Mexico 2019 in my opinion. Those beautiful long sleeves that she wore on stage. Very eye-catching hello got her to the top, well, semi-final. She did change gowns for final night. Actually into a red. Oh, look at that. Next we have Georgia. Judging by her photos, she looks like one of our more petite contestants, but she is also extremely fit. For her look, I really wanted to amp up her curves and her figure, so we went with a very extreme corseted waist. The bodice has some lift to it. Ugh, fabulous. I've seen her win and wear white. She wore white when she competed at Miss America. So for her debut at Miss USA, I thought, you know what, let's go with a bright color. She wore red at her state pageant, but this blue, it really pops. And that shine and that slit, just everything. And of course, as we mentioned to her in my other episode about headshots, which if you wanna see that one, check it out right up here. She has an incredible, jawline, amazing bone structure, and she needs to show that off. So we're going to go with a nice pulled back ponytail. I really want to bring back those ponytails that we used to see Miss USA's win in. It was such a fresh and clean look. Think Shandy, Miss USA 2004. That's what we're thinking ponytail wise. Loved that. And also we accessorized her with some Harry Winston jewels. Why? Because only the best for our queens. <laughs> 
videos. If fashion really isn't your thing and you're struggling with your own evening gown, there is a link in the description below and that is my free dress guide. It is a checklist that I use and these are all the different things that I consider whenever I am dressing one of my own coaching clients. So you can download this for free and take it with you the next time that you are shopping for your own evening gown. Moving right along, she is California. Wow, California style at her state pageant, there really wasn't anything to change. This is one of those situations where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we want to be exciting. Let's put her in a new dress. So I still wanted to go with the softer, more muted colors. I liked the V neckline that she had going on, so we kept that. But even though this color is muted, it's very feminine and soft. It is still fully covered in beads and rhinestones. We're, we're really bringing that pageant factor out. Just to make sure that it doesn't look too stiff, there is this beautiful piece of flowing organza behind it. Oh my gosh. And we also went with this nice little asymmetrical one shoulder look. For her styling, we kept her same hair, her same earrings. She doesn't need a huge dangling earring to draw attention up because her face does it for her. I really hope that she goes with a look similar to this. <sighs> Ladies, please consult with me first before you make these decisions. Next we have Connecticut and oh my gosh, have you seen her waist? We had to accentuate that. I'm putting her in a gown that was one of the options for Miss Vietnam 2019 at Miss Universe. She never ended up using this gown for the pageant, but I thought it has never seen the pageant stage and it needs to be there. It needs to be unveiled. So we went with this look. Of course, we have some beautiful custom Stephanie Summers earrings. They're a dangle bead Swarovski look. And then her hair is just loose and big voluminous curls just tossed over to one side. Very fadil. I'm telling you, this is the look she needs to bring this year. We need to see this at the pageant. If you are loving this episode and you want to show your support, make sure to screenshot this, post it to an Instagram story, and tag me at Danny Walker with your thoughts and also tag your favorite contestants. One of our big front runners is next, and she is New York. For New York, I've noticed in the past she wears these big, bright, bold colors on stage. Typically, they're very rhinestoned out, but with her face and with her figure, I really didn't think that she needed it. I wanted to go more Hollywood, not trying so hard type of look, not super pageanty. So we went with this beautiful custom purple style that is going to pop on stage. We went with those big, wavy, Hollywood glam type of curls. Also, she has some beautiful beautiful jewelry. She's wearing, of course, real diamond earrings and a necklace. And if you notice these details on her necklace, it doesn't fully connect. It has more of a modern vibe, modern look. So we went with some really unique jewelry and of course just showcased her physique by really cinching in that waist, showing off the leg and all of her curves. Oh my gosh, she would look fantastic in this. Up next is Idaho. And let me tell you, she is no potato. Kim is a hidden gem if you have not already realized. I put her in another one of Miss Vietnam 2019's options for Miss Universe that was never worn. I wanted to really create a statement and have that effect that we saw at Miss Universe 2018 when Vietnam walked on stage in that beautiful yellow flowing chiffon creation. I want that effect for her because not many contestants wear a lot of chiffon anymore at Miss USA. It has lost its popularity. So I want to see her in this beautiful bright flowing fabric on stage. Also, because Kim has rather thick hair, which I know it doesn't hold a curl so well, it's heavy, it's harder to style, it takes longer to dry, there's all those things that come with it. So what I wanted to do was simplify the styling for her, make it so much easier to deal with, and we gave her a Pia-esque bun. The other reason we're doing a bun is because she has a stunning face and everyone needs to see it. It does not need to hide behind a big hairstyle or curls. So I pulled everything back really to showcase one of her best features. Next on our list is Oklahoma. For Oklahoma, I wanted her in a gown that didn't scream, I miss Oklahoma. What I was going for is something more daring like what Olivia Jordan did when she showed up at Miss USA. She opted for a bright, 
pink ball gown, something we don't usually see, especially for a Miss Oklahoma, that was by Sherry Hill, but it was modeled after a Dior black couture ball gown. It was very unique. So I wanted to go with something truly eye-catching, but because there's so much going on with the dress, we're keeping her styling simple. We're gonna go with some really great soft, straight hair. She's not gonna be wearing tons of dark eye makeup or a dark lip color, and then she has oversized Stephanie Summers couture earrings that are mimicking the patterns that are on her dress because we still want to bring the glam. If you want to see some of my other favorite contestants, check out this episode right up here. It has all my first picks and faves, even though these might change as we get closer to the pageant. Up next is Texas. Texas won her state pageant in one of my favorite looks, for the 2020 pageant season. She had her hair slicked back in this beautiful Sherry Hill Couture yellow gown, which actually we've seen variations of it before, even during my year at Miss USA. I loved this entire look and how it was styled. So I wanted to do something that really reminded me of that, but also reminds me of Zuleika, who was Miss Universe 2006. That slicked back, wet sort of looking hairstyle is not even easy to pull off and you need a beautiful, not beautiful, you need a gorgeous face for it and Texas has that in spades. So what I decided for her was yes to recreate that slicked back hair look like let's bring it back for Miss USA but we are going to put her in a metal dress a la Miss Universe 2006 because she is going to be like Mercury. just gliding and slinking across that Miss USA stage, inching closer and closer to that crown. I just wanted something that was super different. I didn't want to go with a typical fabric for her, but also something that I feel she could definitely pull off. So we went with this fabulous metal couture style for her. Grounding on our top 10 is Nevada. Boy is it hard to top her state gown or what? That creation was phenomenal. And I don't really know what more you can do for Miss USA because she really set the bar. But since she's going to Miss USA, we're gonna give her a new style here. So I really loved the sleeves that she had going on for her gown. So I wanted to bring those back. But instead of just putting her in a typical gold metallic, what we're doing is we're gonna change this up and it's going to be a really, really yellow gold. I don't want her to wear yellow completely, but I wanted to put her in something where when people see it, they're like, is that, is she wearing yellow or is it, is it actually gold? I'm not really sure. I want people to wonder, but I still want the grandeur of those beautiful draped sleeves. So what we did was we gave her a cape this time. I made the cape bigger than the original because we want to give it that pageant drama. And in my vision, while wearing this gown, she is essentially the Cleopatra of pageantry. These are my hypothetical top 10. I'm not saying that these are the contestants I think that will place at Miss USA, but I thought it would just be something really fun to do. And if you love these looks and if you want to work together, styling is something that I do for my coaching clients. So if you want more information, head over to dannywalkerofficial.com for that. Aside from that, thank you so much for clicking on this episode. Please do me a huge favor. If you had fun watching it and enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Just screenshot this, share this on social media. It would be a huge help for me and it's a really easy way to show your love and support for the channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you know about all my new episodes and connect with me on social media at Danny Walker. Thank you so much though for watching this one and I hope to see you at the next.